Hello everyone, it's April 15th, 2014. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And in this episode, I'm going to continue my look at this Theme and Variations by Delvamere, which I learned is a Theme and Variations on a theme by Mozart, the Odette Ladento version. But in fact, where the theme comes from is kind of obscure. There's a couple versions that I'm slipping. This particular one that I'm looking at suggests that the theme is perhaps from an opera by a rather obscure French composer, an opera on, about Achilles and uh, Diomia, which, you know, obviously Greek mythology. Um, wasn't able to find any more information than that. But anyway, it's a, lo it's a lovely little theme. I looked at the introduction, the theme, and then the first variation last episode. In this episode, I'm going to skip variation two for the moment because I just need to actually practice it a little bit um, and get it to the point where we can do something with it. I'm going to look at variation three, the scherzo, scherzo presto, ha ha, which is a lot of fun. So let me just uh, play through it for you fairly slowly. <laughs> slow down quite like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun and just a couple things to think about on this one. So first of all, of course, is to think about building the speed, right? Building the agility with the hands and the relaxation. So I think one of the big keys to think about on this is just trying to be as relaxed as possible as we, as we start trying to push the speed. And it's nice in the sense that it's always just one hand playing uh, the, the, we keep going back and forth and back and forth, you know, this steady stream of, of these triplets. So, of course, being aware of this little pattern in the right hand where we have to be careful that, that we don't stop or buzz against that C as we go to place the D or that we don't buzz against the D as we go to place the E, it's, you know, etc. So we close and we open up, but not too far so that we can just enough so that we can get on that, sneak onto that D without interfering with the C. Now, of course, it it's also possible that you could place all of those and place them out of order. It feels kind of strange because especially as we go faster, it's much easier to go to, to feel like they're all going in one direction rather than, oh, I'm not supposed to play two yet. But it does, of course, eliminate any chance of buzzing because you've got all three of them placed. My suggestion would be to, I, I mean, play around with it, see if you like it, but I, I would, I would just go with that two, one, two, and it's a good skill, of course, a good skill set to ha be able to sneak two in there without buzzing. So, and you can, you know, you can just practice this, right, Ken? Can you find that next string? be ready to play and not have touched that C. So, and there I nicked it a little bit, right? You can practice it like that, nice and firm and feeling in control. Um, Obviously, you can play around with it. Uh, dotted rhythms. And then just see if you can 
you know, we want that evenness. We want that feeling of strength, that quality of strength. But it, this version, at least, is, is marked pianissimo. And as we get it going faster, we, we kind of want to have that sense of, of surety linger. But th what we're really looking for then is, is relaxation and making sure that... <laughs> So you can play it sometimes where just kind of ignore what the notes are. If, if you play a bunch of wrong notes, that's fine. Just really focus in on, um, I would suggest, on, on sort of this area of the hand and arm and see, can you relax that a little bit? Is it possible to relax it more than wherever it is right at the moment so that... obviously with the left hand as well or or maybe you're feeling it further up the arm but just ignoring the notes so that you know even something like that where you're just kind of mucking around but trying to get that quality of, of moving the fingers quickly but using very little effort and staying really relaxed so that it's only those necessary movements right it's it's just that absolute minimum required to to get it going fast so Slow, strong practice, of course, and then fast, relaxed practice. So this is a great exercise just for focusing on how relaxed can you be, right? And, and just really paying attention to that. And then, of course, the other thing to think about in this is how you want to shape it. Any time when we have a steady stream of notes like this, you it, it, it becomes even more than a normal piece. I, 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 to me, there's always sort of a thread, right? A thread of, of music, a thread note to note but here for sure it, it's just like this long ribbon of music that's going along so how what do we want to do with it you know um are there some places where we want to get it more intense are there places where we want to back off are there places where we want to stretch stretch a little bit um of course in this as i mentioned in, in many of these variations there's spots where maybe we want to do a little bit of an echo effect um if we're doing the repeats, what do we want to do about the second time through, right? Do we, do we want to have that be an echo or not? Is there something else? Maybe it builds in towards the middle. Um, so just being aware then of that sort of overall shape and thinking about what sort of nice things you'd like to do with it. So I think a pretty straightforward variation, not to say that it's easy, you know, but there, as I say, it's nice that it's all hands are always trading back and forth. So there's no cross-hand coordination required. And it's uh, a great exercise to work on speed and relaxation. So that's it for this week. And next time, um, let's hopefully get to number two. And then, of course, we've also got some other great ones coming up as well. So I will see you in a couple weeks' time. Cheers. <laughs>